It's time for some of you to get out of the milk into the meat of God's Word and begin to understand what Christianity is entailing. I don't talk much about tithing because I'm not a legalist. Neither do I talk about the Sabbath because I'm not a legalist. The Sabbath of the New Testament is the life of faith. But the life of faith attaches you to God, makes your vessel His vehicle. And ordinary understanding and simple intelligence says, the 100% commitment of the New Testament will not give to God less than the legalism of the Old Testament asked for. One day a week, one-seventh of your time you dedicate to the Lord. I'm telling you the starting points, folks. The principle of the Sabbath teaches one-seventh of your time belongs to God. And the rest of your time, he's the boss and oversees it. The Sabbath, you are Sabbathing, the New Testament says, every time you act in faith. You fulfill the meaning of the Sabbath precisely and per se. When you in faith step out on any promise of God and act, I'm Sabbathing tonight because I came here not well, in the absolute conviction that God said, I'm the Lord that healeth thee. And every moment I sit here, hanging on to His Word, whether I get healed or not, I'm cementing and welding my grip on God's promise in an act that assures me eternal salvation and the righteousness of Christ being attributed to my account and the blotting out of all my shortcomings. That's the instant benefit of faith. All the efforts at righteousness all day long won't get me a single thing in heaven. And a walk with God, so to speak, to borrow from normal Christianity that would have made every single critic of mine in Los Angeles and the world that looks at me from their self-righteous, pharisaical perspective say, well, Scott got saved. He acted so wonderful all day. That wouldn't get a thing for me in heaven. All it would get me is just exactly what I just said, the approval of some idiot Pharisees who are still crucifying Christ afresh every day. But this little act of faith, gives me the righteousness of Christ every minute and every act of faith I took today and every act of faith you took. As you pick up that phone and dial, as you reach down into your bag that you can see the bottom of, as you lift out for God His portion, just like the widow that Elijah came to, that act of faith assures for you the link up in God that places you in Christ, Christ in you, and eternal salvation and righteousness credited to your account. It's what the devil's been able to destroy is the meaning of Christianity. The church has been bewitched, as Paul bemoaned the bewitching of the Galatians. Having begun in faith, we slip back into our own works. And the Hebrews letter says, There remaineth a Sabbath for the people of God. And that Sabbath is the resting from our own works of righteousness in the act of faith which claims and appropriates and secures to us the righteousness of Christ. So the Sabbath, I know what it is. I just practiced the Sabbath when I brought my body in here. You just practiced the Sabbath. When you acted in faith to dial that phone, some of you sick, to do your part in the battle of faith tonight. But the principle of a Sabbath day 
teaches God's entitled at the very minimum to one seven. So you know what your starting point is. And the goal of life is to be and prove yourself so trustworthy to God that the moment will come in life where instead of you being able to find one seventh of your time you can give to God to the study of the Word and to growth and grace and to the action of spiritual service. He may find you worthy enough to make it easier for you to get you and yours done, giving you more time to give to Him. But the seventh is the starting point. Now let's get down to giving. Again, the New Testament principle is 100%. But you're not going to start showing forth God's worship and laying up treasures in heaven and paying the debt of value for the word that brings you life. If you start less than 10%, Now, the legalist, he looks to 10% as somehow buying him righteousness. Faith gives you righteousness. But you sure can't live a life of faith if you believe that if you give what God required of everybody from the poorest to the richest, if you give that much minimum, you can't make it. Don't try to say you got faith. You haven't got any. And without faith, it's impossible to please God. Hey, I'm not here to entertain. I don't even teach these historic things to entertain. I teach them to prove God is faithful that it might invoke faith, that by faith you might be saved. Not the silly kind of faith. There's just another kind of what I call Las Vegas faith. that produces Christians rolling the dice of faith or pulling the handle of the faith slot machine for the big win. Faith is a way of life that secures eternity. Faith believes that when God says something, it's more lasting, enduring, real, permanent, and eternal than anything else. God's Word then becomes a doorway into eternity, and you grab hold of it. Don't say you got faith. And look at that TV and look me in the eye and say to me, you just don't believe you can give 10%. God wouldn't lay that trip on a miserable bunch that were in the wilderness with neither bread nor water except what He provided. If anybody from the weakest to the strongest couldn't give that much. <laughs> now let me tell you something. You don't know enough about the Bible to even open your mouth about it if you think the tithe is 10%. The tithe that God demanded was never less than 20%. To say I have faith and think that God would demand of a people that He led straight out into a wilderness where there was no bread nor water What if you did it, you couldn't make it. And the irony of God's people is they were faithful in the wilderness. When they got in the land of milk and honey, they quit. You know that? Some of you milk and honey ones out there are just the same. You're the modern day descendants of the tribes. You tied your way through the depression. Now you're scared to death. You'll have something less than $50,000 in the bank tomorrow. And it's like pulling teeth for you to give $100. I'm telling you, tithing is not required 
Your life is required. Faith is required. There is no faith in anybody that believes that you are expressing the value of God's Word, the worth of the light that has come to you, a worthy response to the life that Christ gave for you, a value expression for the Word of God, and any love of eternal things that would invest eternally in heaven. Manifold what you give here. You have no faith in any of the things I've just uttered. If you believe that God can't take care of you and you invest at least the minimum amount that God required of the Old Testament saints. The fact that He required it is proof positive that you can go to that margin and survive. So faith looks at that and says, you know, the measure of my faith begins at that point and works itself upward from there. Now, there are a lot of people listening to me who have learned the truth of that. You give for a lot of reasons. You lay up treasures in heaven when you give to a minister who brings you the word of life. That's what the Philippians did. And Paul received accordingly. The Galatian letter commands you that if you've been taught, you are to share materially with the one who taught you. The Old Testament concept of bringing the tithes and offerings into the storehouse has become standard evangelical doctrine for the storehouse being the place where the food is and wherever you get your spiritual food then becomes the storehouse where you pay. If you belong to a church that feeds you, that's your storehouse. But I'm tired of some of you, some of you living with shibboleths. Sit down with a clock Listen close to what I'm saying. You haven't even started practicing faith. I'm telling you until you give 20%, but because some of you are slow learners and have been mistaught for so many years that a tithe is 10%, for a day or two I'll let you live in that infantile state. Nobody should be given less than that. I'm telling you the tithe begins at 20% if you understand Old Testament teaching. The regular tithe and the special tithes brought it to 20%, and there was a third tithe at periodic times that in essence laid aside money to pay the bill for them to go to certain feasts to worship God. Now some of you need to straighten your act out. Faith will get you to heaven. That other stuff will leave you here. And the only faith that God is concerned about is that action that's based on His Word. Then He'll test that. He'll test it plenty. To some of you that are calling in and telling me how hard it is on you tonight, my answer to you is the same as Peter gave to the scattered saints all across Asia. Why don't you eulogize the Lord? Why don't you rejoice and eulogize the Lord in the midst of your tribulation? You are children of a heavenly Father. Why don't you act like it? You are citizens of a heavenly King. Why don't you act like you belong to that kingdom? You are pilgrims in an alien land, hurling what you have into eternity where you'll have joys forevermore. Why don't you act like it? And then, as Peter said, you will be found over there to the glory and renown of our Lord. And as the heroes of faith were held up as an example, you haven't yet resisted unto blood. Christianity is very simple just tough. And the problem with most people, and the reason why there's few that make it in, most people 
haven't got the stuff of faith to take the first steps that gives God the chance to finish the job with you. The first little storm and you cave in. Well, I'm looking for gutsy Christians and so is God.